but I'm sorry about that. Ah, my privilege today to lead us in a time of communing um, and remembering what God has done for us through his son Jesus. And so, um, if you remember last week, Darren had the analogy of just even if one sin, one little cross was made, one mistake was made by each person in the world, you know, with 7.8 billion of us, there'd be a lot of sin and the result of sin uh, evident in the world. But of course, we've got generations and uh, uh, adding to that. But not only that, you and I know that we don't just make one mistake a day, do we? <laughs> Sometimes there's some days where we've made multiple mistakes and of course each day brings new mistakes and uh, new sins into our lives and so the world was absolutely covered in sin and the result of sin was destruction. The wages of sin is death, death to us emotionally, death to us spiritually, death to us physically and death and destruction led from one incident to another incident because it's a bit like throwing uh, a pebble in a pond, the ripples continue out. So the mistake that you and I make don't often just affect us, but affect the rest of the world. And so evil was definitely um, ruling and reigning in the world and death was definitely king and lord. Um, but enter into that picture, Jesus. Jesus came as God's son and he let go of his godliness and took on his manliness, even though he remained without sin, and he entered into the world. You can see him in there. <clears throat> yeah, not really, hey. The reason we can't is because he actually became like sin for us. Remember it says that he who knew no sin became sin. He actually entered into that death and that sin to be uh, able to redeem us from it, from it and take, set us free. So then he died on the cross. His life was destroyed and death itself ruled over him and uh, triumphed over him by the looks of it. Every part of his being was dead. There wasn't one cell on and he died and then he was buried in the tomb. And while he was in that tomb... He went down to hell and he preached to those captives that were there and he led them free. There's actually a scripture that tells us that after his resurrection, tombs were opened and many people saw their dead walking around that said they called them saints actually walking around. Obviously, they didn't remain alive. Um, so they obviously went up to heaven uh, with him in that process. Um, while he was also in um, hell, he took the keys of death and hell and he took power over death itself and he defeated death. And so in that time that he was in the tomb, he absorbed all our sin, he absorbed all our pain, he absorbed all our shame, he absorbed death itself into him and he defeated death. He took the keys of death and hell from him, um, the devil he preached to those that had died previously. I'd always wondered as a child, it's not fair. Jesus came at this point in history. What about all the people that had lived before? But scripture actually tells us that he went down and preached to them. And then it tells us that the graves were open and people were seen walking around. And so he then led them captives up to heaven. Um, he who descended, ascended and, and took those captives with him. And so he was a gracious God. God knew that man's sin needed to be dealt with, that we were bringing the destruction to the earth, the destruction to each other and destruction to the world. And something had to be done about it. Something had to be done to destroy that sin and to bring hope to us. And I believe that hope is found in resurrection life. I'm just going to read to you from Romans um, chapter 6. All right, Romans chapter 6, and we're going to start at verse 3. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus have been baptised into his death? This is one of the powerful things about water baptism. Therefore, you have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in his death... 
Remember, many of us go, yep, I've been united. He took the penalty of my sin. We understand that. But it says, certainly shall we be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with. Your body of sin, the world's body of sin was done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For the one who has died is freed for sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death is no longer master over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all time, all the generations, all the time, future as well as past. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. So you too consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God. In Christ Jesus. Therefore, sin is not to reign in your mortal body so that you would obey its lusts. And do not present your parts of your body to, as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead, and your body as parts and instruments of righteousness. Sin shall no longer be master over you, for you are no longer under law, but under grace considering ourselves alive to God, not bound by sin, not dead in sin. So let's see what happened to Jesus, if I can do this one-handedly. There he is. Jesus rose to life, having destroyed sin, having taken the consequence of sin, your sin, my sin, for all the generations past, present, to come. And he now lives in resurrection life. And it says for us to consider ourselves the same. You have risen clean, your sins washed away to life eternal. So let's take our communion today and remember to thank him, not just for dying for our sins, but for the resurrection life. Consider yourselves alive, we just read. Alive, death broken, and life, resurrection life, available to us. Jesus, we thank you. The work you did was a complete work, complete for the whole world, from the moment of Adam and Eve through to the last person that's ever going to be on this face. Lord, you have done a complete work for all time, but also a complete work for us as individuals. Every sin and transgression that we do has been covered. You absorbed it. You paid for the penalty of it. And Lord, you didn't just let that death triumph over you. You beat it. You destroyed it so that we could rise in freedom and in life itself. We thank you today for that resurrection power and life being manifest in us. In your name, amen. You may partake. Bleach and bread tastes good too. (laughs) Hence, I'm wearing white. (laughs) Mind you, it also represents resurrection life, doesn't it? White.